Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. If you watch my channel, you know I do quite a lot of 3D printed projects, including my alien xenomorph suit, which is stood just here. Here's its head. My 3D printed R2-D2 project, which I've only just started. Check out the video on that. And also my giant Iron Man Hulkbuster suit, which is in progress and has some parts 3D printed. I currently own two 3D printers, both of them are Lulzbots. I have a Lulzbot AI101, which is no longer made, and also the Taz3, which I use for all of the projects. So I've got quite a lot of projects here, and a few viewers are worried that I won't have time to spend enough quality time on each project to make regular updates. Um, that's partly true, and to combat that, I'm going to need some more 3D printer capacity. So here it is, here is a box with Lulzbot written on, and it says made in Colorado, so this is a TAS4 from Lulzbot. Now Lulzbot ship out of uh, depots locally around the world, so um, they in fact ship out of London, so if you buy one in the UK or Europe you'll get it shipped uh, not um, from the US. So this one arrived in a couple of days, so let's open this box up. So first of all we've got the instructions that actually tell you how to unbox it and what to take out in the right order. And I've actually of course done one of these before, so I should take this foam sheet off. You should find the box of stuff. So, so those are various power leads, so we've got the international, US and UK power leads. Uh, some bits and pieces, and the octopus we'll look at in a moment that's been printed on this printer as a test. Right, so in there is the extruder, so I'll just take that out. Looks like those come with a fan on now, which is quite good. Uh, and that's the power supply. So the next thing is to stand this up in the box so it's uh, up the right way. So, here we go. And we should be able to carefully lift that out. The last item in the box is the Lulzbot tool kit, which has all the tools you need to maintain and um, put the printer together, although there's not much to it. So here are the main parts we've got, uh, which I unbox, so the extruder needs to be fitted on. We've got the tool kit here, which has loads of stuff in. It's got an acetone bottle for making um, ABS juice, uh, various tools, wire brush, tweezers, a set of Allen keys which fit all of the uh, screws on the printer. We've also got a set of needle nose pliers and the famous clam knife which is a tool of choice for removing prints from the bed. So I've got my little octopus here. What they actually do with every printer they ship is print an octopus on it to check that it works okay. So that's the one that was printed on this very printer. So power supply. And we've got these two main parts. So we've got the bed here which slides this way and this fits into the main part of the printer we've got here with its control panel. Got some transit bolts to remove and some other bits and pieces, but we're basically ready to put this to, uh, together. It comes in two main parts and uh, you can be up and printing within an hour. So we've got some little hand wheel bolts here we need to undo and that should fit to the bottom of the bed which bolts into this space here so the bed slides backwards and forwards. So that goes in there, motor facing the back and the lead facing the left. That sits nice and snugly on there, and we can put these uh, screws back in and screw it back down. So looking at the back of the printer, we need to take off this blue tape, which is for holding all the parts on in transit. So that just covers the home switch there to make sure it doesn't get knocked. And then we've got these connectors which are keyed and have little catches on, which need to connect up with the motor. The connector configuration on the back of the electronics box is quite different to the TAS3. We've got these lovely big connectors which all fit in and they basically lock in with things that turn. So if I just pull that one out for the heated bed, you can see we've got these uh, latching connectors which only fit in in one way. And uh, once it's in you can screw this thing up and it keeps it nice and secure. The bottom connector there is for the power. But all this is documented in the full colour manual. So there's the part there, so step 11 tells you exactly where to plug everything in. 
So the top of this box is quite different as well to the Taz 3, which didn't have any connectors on, so all of the extruders and everything uh, were cabled into a panel which removed from the bottom, so to fit you with extruders you had to open the box up. But now we've got this additional um, little cover here, which is for the second extruder. So this is one of the extruders, and that's the second one, and this goes to the control panel and SD card slot at the front. So I should add, as well as the quick start guide, which tells you how to unbox the printer and get up and running, it does come with a full colour manual, which is this one here, uh, which is actually, basically it's a 3D printing manual that tells you how to do your first prints, troubleshooting, how to use the software, uh, the menu system for the control panel and so on. So this is a really useful resource to have. So we need to remove various transit bolts. Um, these ones have just got wing nuts that you can undo and they just hold the uh, carriage for transit, so that just undoes. And it should unhook. There we go. So we just need to take those off. All that remains is to stick our extruder in. So that's held on with one screw here. So using the appropriate sized Allen key, we can just go and undo that. Then our extruder should drop in. It's got basically a tongue and a groove. So that just drops in there, which makes it really easy to change out the tool head. And we'll just put that screw back in, and that should be it. Um, there's three connectors we need to connect. And those three connectors are here attached to the carriage already, so those are for the motor, the fan, and the hot end. So these will only connect one way round, and again, they're all nice keyed connectors, uh, which only fit together one way, and they lock in. So we just need to connect those up. So we're just about ready to power up. The last very important feature is the SD card that comes with it. This is an eight gig SD card and that goes into the side of the control panel and that contains all the G code for printing. It also uh, generally, these printers ship with some things to print ready on them, including the octopus example. So if I turn this on, there we go, looks good. It says it's a TAS 4.1. And there we go, ready to go. So there's a very important part in the quick start guide, which is to do with levelling the bed. So uh, as it's been shipped, it may be the end stops aren't in the right place and so on. So we need to make sure that we don't just smash the head straight into the glass. So um, we're going to do that and then we're going to get up running and do some printing. So I'm fairly confident I know what I'm doing here because I've uh, used quite a few 3D printers in the past. Um, essentially what's happened is they've shipped it with the end stop set too high so the, um, there's no danger of smashing the z-axis into the bed. So there's a little micro switch here which senses the end. So if I just home this using the control panel, I'd urge you to consult with the manual on this one. So let's just auto home the printer. And we should find the z goes down but it's actually nowhere near the bed. I can get my finger in there because this little uh, thing is set too high. So we need to gradually wind that down so that the head is right at the right level um, to print the first layer. So have a look in the manual for that and the quick start guide. It's actually a really easy process and it comes with a configuration print that you can print all over the bed to check that the four corners are level. Each corner has a little adjuster uh, for fine adjustment to get the bed level. It actually comes with a piece of green ABS for testing, but I'm gonna use some white ABS that I've got here. And uh, we've got this little fold out thing to stick the spool on. And there's a guide tube here, which guides the filament all the way down to the extruder. So we'll just shove that in and we'll heat the printer up. So I'm all up to temperature and I've loaded my filament into the extruder. So now I'm gonna print the octopus with the control panel. So we've got one right there with the novelties folder. And let's go for the bigger octopus. So there comes the first layer of our octopus, um, it looks perfectly good. I may have levelled the bed um, so the z-axis was a tiny bit low, um, but we'll see how that goes, it's looking fairly reasonable so far. So the Taz has this handy display that tells you the progress of the print, as well as monitoring the temperature and various other features, it tells you the file name and so on. So uh, we're about 34 minutes into that print and probably uh, just under halfway there. So let's just see how that's doing. Yep, looking pretty good. So we'll come back in a few minutes and hopefully that'll be finished. So we're about 1 hour 35 into the print. Print's going pretty well. We've only got a small bit of the head to do, which obviously gets smaller as it goes up to the top. 
This printer ships with a 0.3mm nozzle. You can actually get other nozzles. I normally use a 0.5mm and you can get nozzles down to 0.1mm which will obviously um, impact the print time. Here's my 0.5mm that I'll be putting on to block in some bigger parts and the printer also comes with the correct shape spanner to change the nozzle in the toolkit. You can also get a dual extruder option either to print with two types of rigid material or you can get the dual extruder with a flexi dually extruder which is a flexi extruder specifically for ninja flex which is a rubber like material and that's what i have on the taz 3 if you check out my alien videos you can see that dual extruder in use to make hybrid parts printed in both rubber and rigid material at the same time So my test print is finished and it all looks good, so now I can swap out that nozzle for the larger one and get blocking in some parts for my 3D printed R2-D2 project. One really important thing to mention about Lulzbot printers is that they're open source, which means they're really easy to upgrade and also make modifications to. They're built on RepRap, so they use Marlin firmware and the electronics is an Arduino. So all of the printer is open source, you can actually download the whole printer and build your own from Lulzbot if you wish to do so, but I'll be doing some modifications on this one, like upgrading the hot end, some other bits and pieces, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check back for updates in the future.